Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Ratrig VCore 3.1 and what parts I recommend you buy if you're looking to get one. The suggestions and whatnot that I'm going to make today are not like the only option. Don't think that everything else is useless. My aim really for today is to help you make an informed choice about the parts that you get rather than just either going for a standard kit which may not suit your needs or selecting parts where you're not fully informed about the decisions that you're making. So the first item you'll come to when you're looking to get a VCore 3.1 is the size or the build volume. This is the build volume, so the volume in which you can print, not the size of the printer. The size of the printer is larger than the build volume for obvious reasons. In my opinion, it's the most important aspect to get right because it's the least easy to change after you've bought it. You can change the print surface, for example, very easily, but it's not so easy to change the length of all the extrusions and the bed size and the rails and the, you, you get the picture. So which size should you get? Well, my recommendation is go for the smallest printer you can get that is large enough to print the size parts that you need. The reason being, not only can you achieve higher acceleration because the overall mass is smaller, they're generally a little bit easier to build and a lot easier to move around should you need to. The 500 millimeter cube build volume, for example, generally won't fit through a normal door. So the other reason small printers I find are better is that if you have a print farm, the rate at which you deliver finished prints is not based on the size of the printer that you have and how many you can fit on the bed. It's to do with the number of extruders you have extruding filament. As an example, if you're trying to print 100 parts a day and maybe that's 10 kilos of parts, if you've got only one extruder running at maximum flow rate, that's going to be the limit at which you can create that 10 kilograms of material out of the hot end. But if you've got 10 or 100 printers doing exactly the same thing, you can see how that amount of plastic coming out simultaneously from many hot ends will achieve your 10 kilograms of parts much quicker. The next item we come to on the list is the controller. So while there are five selectable options here, there's kind of really two. Firstly, you have the Big Tech Octopus or you have the Duet 3 Mini 5 Plus. So the Mini 5 Plus needs the 2 Plus expansion board and then the Big Tech Octopus also needs to come with additional drivers and the Raspberry Pi 4 Clipper. My selection here is really based on what, what is supported by RatOS. RatOS is a, like, a pre-configured clipper firmware, like SD card image with all the kind of stuff on that you need and very easy configuration steps to get your printer up and running. So at the moment I'm suggesting Octopus because it's what's available in the list, but if this list changes over time, I would highly recommend going for whatever is supported by RatOS because it's just so much easier to deal with. The next item on the list is the hot end selection. I would actually not use any of the ones on that list. There's nothing wrong with anything on that list, to be fair. You could go with one of those, and if you want to, just do it, it's fine. But personally, what I recommend at the moment is to go for a Revo Voron. The reason being, it's just the most practical and has lots of like ease of use functionality that's gonna be really useful in the long run, especially if you're having maybe multiple printers or you want to very easily switch between nozzles, I find the Revo system is just much more practical to use. Now, in terms of flow rate, it is a little bit lower than those ones you see there. But most of the time, you're not gonna be printing at such ridiculous speeds that you need ridiculously high flow rate. At the end of the day, having more practicality and ease of use quality of life features in your hot end and 3D printer system is in my opinion kind of more useful than just having ridiculous hot ends with super high power. So my recommendation is Revo Voron, get a changeable nozzle pack, Obsidian if it's available soonish, and then you're pretty much good to go with lots of easy nozzle swaps. So the next item on the list is the extruder. So for this we've got LGX Lite, LGX or the Orbiter. My personal choice here is the LGX Lite. I've used it on two different printers and I really like the latch mechanism which is the idle tension, which locks into specific positions. This makes it very easy to remove tension for putting or like for loading or unloading filament. And it also means that when you reapply tension, it goes to the exact same point. So what many people don't know is that the amount of tension on your idler will affect the amount of filament that gets extruded. It's not a huge amount, but it can be enough to make your prints look slightly better or slightly works worse. So the more repeatable that mechanism, the better. Now, LGX and LGX Lite both have that similar mechanism, but LGX Lite is 
lighter, which is good for printing fast and high acceleration, and it's also cheaper by quite a bit, so I don't see any reason or benefit to going for the LGX in this scenario. Before we carry on, don't forget to subscribe by clicking that button below, and you can support me via Patreon via the link in the video description. I've also got a website where I sell lots of modifications and things for 3D printers, like LEDs and PCBs and stuff like that, so you can find that link also down in the description. Next up we have the printed parts, so there's only one option, either you have them or you don't, and they're made out of PETG. Now personally I would suggest printing all the parts out of ABS, and I'll have some optimised ABS parts coming to my GitHub soon, so I'll leave a link down below for whenever those are available. But I would suggest ABS over PETG, especially if you're looking to enclose either immediately or in the future. If you are going to print the parts yourself, I would suggest trying to print some of the parts around the hot end in ABS still, even if your printer is not really optimal or set up for that. The reason being, components in that area will get pretty warm pretty quick. So ABS just has a bit more temperature resistance, which should help any drooping, warping or sagging on stuff that can happen around a hot end. In terms of filament choice, I would suggest Oosnest because they support me a lot and they have lots of colors in ABS and ABS Pro. So ABS Pro is like slightly easier to print. If you're having trouble printing ABS in an open printer, you could try out ABS Pro. Next up, we have the motors and I would suggest you get the ones that come with the kit. The reason being, they're from LDO, which is a known good performance brand, so highly recommended, but they also are configured or have their settings configured in RATOS for good performance. So you don't have to spend lots of time tuning your motors or tuning the settings for the motors to get the best out of them, because all of that stuff is already done for you in RATOS. For the cables, I would, mm, you can get them. They can actually be plugged in pretty much as they are. They'll just be a bit messy and not the right connector. So it's up to you. Personally, I don't mind having them and modifying them. It's probably easier to do that than buying all the cables and connectors from scratch. For the flexible sheet, um, unless you want to print lots or mostly PLA, then I would recommend getting this. The reason I don't recommend it for PLA is it just doesn't bond quite as well. PLA seems to like a really smooth PI surface, whereas things like PETG, ABS, ASA, and other stuff like that prefer the textured stuff, the textured PEI. So yeah, for PLA, I'd probably not get it and find something smooth from elsewhere, but for anything else, get the textured one. In terms of size of the flex plate, you want to select the one that is just 10 mil on both sides, larger than the build volume that you've selected. Next, we have the heater. So this is a Keynovo heater mat. It's kind of just a big silicon heater mat, pretty standard. Keynovo are a pretty reputable brand now, especially within the 3D printing area. Lots of printers use Keynovo, so don't worry about that. You do need to select the right voltage. So for 220 volts, if you're in Europe, for example, or the UK, you want the 220 volt one or 120 for the US. You just have to select the voltage for the mains in your country. The size you'll notice leaves a 10 millimeter gap around all sides. I would say this is not perfect, but it is fine. So don't worry about it. Just make sure you get the one that's a little bit smaller than the build volume size that you've selected. For the solid state relay, yes, I can recommend this sealing one. This is what Kinovo have supplied with their kind of heated mats for quite a long time. It seems to be pretty good, it's pretty reliable. I've used it before, not had problems, so I can recommend that. For the power supply, you have two options, a Meanwell and WeHo. Don't kind of observe too much that the WeHo is higher power. WeHo is a clone brand, I think, I'm pretty sure. So Meanwell will be the more reliable, more consistent, high performance or high spec unit in general, and that's why it has a slightly higher price. An alternative option, if you're looking to do things a little bit more bespoke, would be to get a UHP type power supply, which is like a thinner, long potted power supply. They are generally high quality and also about double the price of these Meanwell LRS units. But again, they are higher quality, so I would probably recommend them over this if you want something super nice. Moving on, next we have the fans. We have a 4010 and a 4028. So despite what the listing says, these are both actually axial fans, which means they kind of, I mean, it's like a normal fan for most people. The 4010 one is the one that sits on the front and cools the cold end of the hot end, the cold side of the hot end. And then the 4028 sits up behind the modular carriage system and blows through to cool the parts that you're actually printing. Both of these pretty well recommended by the community. The GDS time, Fan for the 4010 
is not quite so great. It's not a super high performance fan. So you may want to go Sunon as a slightly higher quality alternative, but there's nothing really wrong with this. So to save yourself the pain of sourcing stuff from lots of different places, this 4010 should be absolutely fine. And maybe if it does get damaged down the line, maybe upgrade to a Sunon at that point. Next, we have the Z probe options, and there are two available here. We've got the Anklabs BL Touch, which is a mechanical sort of electrical moving tip probe. It's a touch probe. And then we have the Rat Rig Super Pinder from PNF, which is a non contact inductive probe. I would definitely recommend the Super Pinder. By the way, this is not the same one that I talk about in my V Minion review. That was a different sensor, which was not as great. Super Pinder, definitely highly recommended though. It's very consistent and a very good probe. You could go for the BL Touch if you want to, or it's just stock options change. There's nothing particularly wrong with it, but the mechanical probe is just a little bit vulnerable. And the whole system is just a little bit less robust. The mounting system is not quite as robust and sturdy. So it is fine, it does work. I've used mine on the Vico 3 for quite a while and not had any major problems. But for speed, reliability, and low risk of damage, I would definitely recommend the Super Pinder over the BL Touch. Next up we have the end stop modules. So these are the little switches with a wire, which when you home, tell the printer where it's at zero, zero. This is a bit of an odd recommendation, but I would probably recommend you buy them and decide whether to use them at the time you're doing the configuration. The reason being, setting up end stops can be a little bit of a pain there's just more wires to deal with and if you want to get them the right length and stuff you then have to cut them down recrimp and all this kind of stuff which does take time and for a lot of people that can be a bit of a pain the alternative is sensorless homing which means i mean it's not really sensorless you just don't use an end stop the sensing is done by the motor driver so when the like hot end or motor carriage crashes into the end it senses the increase in force by a current and load angle, and then tells the controller that it's hit the end. As you might have guessed, that is a little bit more complex to set up. It does take a little bit of, well, it can potentially require some refinement in terms of what that load angle is to get it just right. So a little bit potentially more configuration, but with RATOS, it is mostly pre-configured already. So you do need to enable it. As far as I'm aware, it does need to be enabled, but it should be fine without any additional tuning. My personal recommendation, as I mentioned, is to get the end stops as a backup because they are pretty cheap. So it might be worth getting them just in case. It's better than having to like go back and buy them and then pay for extra shipping on top and all this kind of stuff. So probably get them. Attempt senseless homing. If you're not enjoying it, not having a good time or having trouble with the configuration, add in the end stops as a backup solution. For the spool holder, for obviously holding the spool of filament that feeds into the printer, I would probably recommend getting the kit, even though I've not had a great experience with the one on the V Minion. I believe this one is a little bit different. It uses the same brackets that are in the V Core 3 assembly, rather than the weird 90 degree offset funny ones with countersinks on them. So assembly of it should be fine. It's just quite a lot of parts that are, feel a little bit over the top. A printed part one would probably be more optimal, but at the end of the day, it does work. So yes, I would probably go for the spool holder kit. I print the parts myself because I have the option to do that, but if you don't, then get them with the printed parts. Next, we come on to the enclosure kit. Now, rat rig enclosures are a bit of a unicorn, it seems at the moment. They have been talked about for a very long time. I've seen very few people actually have them, set up with them and using them. Now, if you do want to print with a, like a heated enclosure or a warm enclosure that gets heated by the bed, I would recommend getting an enclosure. Whether you go for this kit or an alternative design that you do yourself or with other materials or something is totally up to you. But I would suggest that if you are going for enclosure that you do have ABS parts rather than the PETG. PETG at that temperature, you can probably get up to like 60 degrees, will probably start to go or start to go a little bit soft and may start to deform a little bit. You do need to still source the panels separately. For the panel material, Polycarbonate is probably the best option. It's pretty temperature resistant, but it is also quite expensive. The alternative, which is much cheaper, is a kind of corrugated or fluted uh, plastic sheet, which is very, very cheap. It's made of polypropylene. It's a little bit soft and wobbly, and it doesn't look that great, really. It looks a bit like a greenhouse roof, 
but at the end of the day, it's a very low cost option for adding panels to your printer to allow you to print at higher temperatures. It's what I've used on my first Voron build and it has worked pretty well to be fair. It is worth noting that the enclosure is not available for the 200 millimeter size. I don't know why, maybe the design is just not optimal for a smaller printer. So maybe we'll see some other options for the 200 mil size, but if you do want an enclosure, it looks like you're gonna to have to go for at least a 300 millimeter size printer. So my finished configuration comes to 949 euros. And then on top of that, I would need to buy my filament, which I'd probably get from Oosnest, ABS or ABS Pro or PETG, if you can't do those. And then also the Revo Voron and maybe a nozzle kit. So there's probably another 150 to 200 euros to go on top of that for the filament and hot end. The final thing to answer is what other stuff do you also need to buy or could buy or might help you if you did buy? And the first thing would be JSTXH connectors and terminals. So, well, I personally buy these in quite large quantities from AliExpress. You can get them in reasonably good size kits from Amazon. So whichever you go for, whichever you want to do, but I would recommend getting them and rewiring the motor cables and stuff for the correct length, just to keep your wiring kind of tidy and easier to manage. It can take a bit of time to get used to crimping if you've not done it before, but once you have the knack of it, it's actually not too difficult and can be done reasonably quickly. If on the other hand, you go for a different controller like the Duet one, for example, then you need the appropriate connectors for that control board. Although I'm pretty sure that board comes with all the connectors and terminals that you'll need. So you don't need to worry about it. Of course, if you're going to be crimping JSTXH, you will need a tool. And the one I have is just labeled as SN-01BM. Other than that, make sure you've got some appropriate sized hex keys, side cutters, wire strippers, and stuff like that. You also might need some additional fluids. So a lubricant, uh, some method of injecting lubrication into the linear rails. So normally a syringe with a flat tipped needle will allow you to insert. So I think that's pretty much it. There's quite a long list of additional parts and extras to go on top of your 3D printer purchase but these are things that will probably last you quite a long while afterwards as well. So hopefully that's gonna be helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.